I'm from Left Rack City. It's Left Rack City. This is in Queens. We're in Queens now. All the ballers is from Queens. We got myself, Kenny Smith, Mark Jackson. And I ain't playing this. I ain't playing this court in a minute. Kenny Anderson, Left Rack City. Yeah, get that pass going. Oh. We here on your court, Kenny Anderson court, Left Rack City. It started here. It wasn't going in the gym, this that another. It started out here coming out, all the people just around, just watching, and this is where the legend was made. What's good about Left Rack, it was, it was it's, it's convenient. I walk out my apartment, walk right here to the court, and then everybody had terraces. So, you know, they could look out on their terrace and, you know, we'd be like, oh, Chibs is playing today, you know, they can come and be crowded. It was just like some good game. All the finger rolls, <laughs> the hook shots off the backboard. You know, these basketball courts in the summer stayed crowded. You had to like win to stay on. Quick, <laughs> You know, I was like 160, you know, about 165, soaking wet, getting pushed around. One thing I could do is handle the ball. So if you can handle the ball, they couldn't take it from you. So they get mad and grab me, grab the ball, and throw it off. And then my sister used to come down and be like, yo, y'all gonna let my brother play. Leave my brother alone. So enough of that. They just said, okay, he could play. And then I started, you know, really, you know, playing well. When you left here, where did you like to hoop and go take your game other place so other people can see what you did? Everywhere. You know, I used to play in all the city tournaments where you could compete against the best in the city. And, and that's what you, that's what I had to do. I had to get out of this barrel. You know, get out of left rack and say, I want to play against the best and see where I, you know, uh, add up, you know, against the best. I used to be like, oh, John Stockton is in front of me. I'm going to, I used to go hard. You, you know what I'm saying? Gary Payton right there. There's a loose ball when I'm going. He's going after it. I got to go for it. Just to get yourself riled up to really work at your craft. You got to work hard. You got to tell me about Chip. Oh, wow. That's a good story. My mother named me that when I was like five days old. She had me in her arms. You know, trying to, you know, give it a name, a nickname, and her mouth was full. And she said Cheeks, and it came out Chibs. And ever since then, I was Chibs. It's funny, because when I went to register for school, me and my mother, when I was kindergarten, you know, when she said my name was Kenny, I was like, who's Kenny? <laughs> I thought I was Chibs. So, you know, it was, it's a true story, man. And uh, it just grew on me. The neighborhood kid known as Chibs would make a name for himself on the street but it was his play at Archbishop Malloy High School that turned him into a New York City legend. A lot of memories here, man. Um, this, is where, this is where it all started. Kenny became the first freshman ever to play varsity under another New York City basketball icon, head coach Jack Curran. He wasn't sure what team to try out for. I said, well, let him come in with the varsity. We'll take a look at him first and after about Two or three minutes, I said, he's definitely going to be on the varsity. He's, the passes he made were terrific. He was probably the most exciting point guard ever to play in this league. Despite not starting as a freshman, Kenny set the city's all-time scoring record with over 2,600 points, quickly becoming the most publicized and decorated player of his generation. Kenny Anderson, it's showtime now for our Christian Malloy. He goes between the legs, left-handed, right-handed. Either way it goes, Kenny Anderson is an all-around complete player. When did you know you're good? 85 when we won the city championship. After that game, it was, I, you know, I got my, my swagger, I got my confidence. I got all, after that game, you know, all the you know, colleges recruiting me and all that. It was just, it was just crazy from then. Kenny would become the most recruited player ever, eventually signing with Bronx native Bobby Cremins to play at Georgia Tech. Now we're now. Yeah, I just wanted to blend in and uh, do the right thing, but I wanted to win. He walks through the door. He's about a buck ten, soaking wet. I'm like, this skinny little kid is going to help us get to the Final Four? I don't see it. First day of practice, the ball busts me in the back of the head. Yo, D, I see you, yo, I see. And then I was introduced to the phenom of Kenny Anderson and what he was and what he was about. And it was all because of this young kid from New York that came in and made life easy for everybody. The combination of Kenny, Dennis Scott, and Brian Oliver were unstoppable. 
1990, they won the ACC championship and made a trip to the Final Four, earning the nickname Lethal Weapon 3. It clicked, and I think that the more we were able to have success early in the season, eventually that whole thing of us being lethal, uh, all of us averaging over 20 points a game, was something that you know caught on nationwide. We all mixed well. You know, the Lethal Weapon 3, we, we uh, mixed well. It was a good gel, and I was just orchestrating everything. Kenny's name is synonymous with New York City basketball. His name continues to ring out in the hearts of so many New Yorkers because of his incredible story. While his legend grows in the city, the kid, affectionately known as Chibs, attributes all of his success to his family and friends who molded him along the way. This is where it all started for me, and the comeback, it's, it's a big thing, you know what I mean? And um, like I said, it's something I always will remember. So many guys that along the way helped me, you know, uh, mold me for as a player, and also in how to be a young man. Experience is the best teacher. Like, I've been through ups and downs. I've been top player. I've been the role player. I've been on the, on the end of the bench. I grew up in a one-parent home. And so there's, there's nothing you, you can tell me, and I still made it. What you put in is what you get out of it. And that's the same with life. <laughs>